Hi, and good afternoon or good morning, depending on when you're watching this. I am Dr. Michelle Lentzmeyer, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you a little bit about ePortfolios. Now, you'll notice that my, discussion, my title says discussion and demonstration. Well, this is actually a two-part presentation. So this first part's just going to be some of the basic definitions and background that we're going to use in the final presentation, which is going to include more of a discussion and more information. So today, um, we're going to talk mostly about the definition of portfolios, um, different functions and types of ePortfolios. We're going to look at techniques on how to match competencies and activities to elements of an, a portfolio. And then we're, I'm going to just touch on some of the different elements that we'll be exploring more in the final presentation, such as assessment of portfolios, different rubrics, adult learning theory, um, and really doing reflection and um, assessing that in a better way than what we normally do. So just to give you a definition of portfolios, um, this is the ACGME definition, and it says the portfolio is an interactive web-based professional development tool that residents, and I put, or students, can use throughout their residencies or education to record and organize their learning and to reflect and receive feedback on their skills as physicians building evidence that allows them to chart their own progress over time. Now that's a long definition, but I think there are some key elements to this definition. So the things that I want to point out in this definition that I think really flow into what a portfolio is are record, organize, reflect, receive feedback, and then chart your own progress. So whenever we're talking about portfolios, they do have different functions. So there's a resident or student portfolio that residents or students can use. There's a faculty portfolio, and many institutions have faculty portfolios where they put their information into a showcase. Um, there's also what are considered course portfolios, and those are fairly new. They're just starting to be used. And so in the future presentation, we'll touch on those a little bit more, but for this one, I'm going to just talk more about resident student portfolios. So the purpose of portfolios is documenting what happened, showcasing achievements, developing expertise, and reflecting on experience. Now there's one more purpose that I think we're missing here and a lot of people miss. So I'm going to give you a few minutes just to think about what that other purpose might be for portfolios. Okay, so um, the last purpose that I think we miss a lot is empowering the resident or learner. With portfolios, we can actually promote lifelong learning and improvement. And I think that's a key purpose for portfolios that we should um, keep in mind as we're developing them. One thing we don't want to do is we don't want a portfolio just to be a scrapbook. And that's kind of, from the portfolios I've seen, that's what happens. Um, this is an example of a chart that shows a portfolio for a resident or student from one institution. Now this shows that it's more like a resume or a vita, and that's not really what we want the purpose of portfolios to be. So whenever we're thinking about portfolios, we want them to be more attached to a learning activity, a learning outcome, or a competency. We want students to show that they have developed in a certain area. So this is a better diagram of um, what a portfolio could look like that's really a good portfolio. And you'll notice at the bottom we have the reflective piece and we have the validation for the evidence they provided and feedback. So those are key issues that we're going to talk about as we go through the presentation. Um, here's some elements of an effective portfolio, and these are just in the literature. I put this in here, and I'll just give you a few minutes to look at this. I'm not going to go through all of them, but those resources will be available for you um, with this presentation. So um, I'll make sure that those are in an area that you can get them. 
But one of the key aspects of ePortfolios is learner, reflect, learner reflection on his or her development. Um, learners are responsible for documentation of achievement. Um, a lot of times we leave that up to the faculty to define, but I think it's better if we give that to the learners to define, um, staying within certain realms. And then learners getting feedback on what they've put in there so that they can improve. So those are some keys that aren't always thought about whenever we're talking about ePortfolios. Um, reflection relates to a deliberate process of thinking about and interpreting experiences in order to learn from it. And I think that's something that students really need to learn. And so in the future presentation that um, I'm going to do, we're going to talk about those different stages and how do you get students from the uncomfortable stage of providing feedback to really being um, more reflective and providing more detailed feedback that you know, results in action. So some reflective questions that we can have students answer in these portfolios is, what did you learn? Who helped you with the patient? What might you do differently next time? Were your values challenged? What made you feel good? How um, to share with others? We can also ask them to think about what happened. What did you notice or find intriguing, exciting? What did you worry about? What could you learn from this? How would you go about learning it? How would you know you have learned it? So all of these are really reflective questions, and I think you have to structure those questions so that it gives you the information that you want from them. You can't have yes or no questions, and we're going to talk about structuring those questions more in the future presentation. But here's a simple approach that I think is good, and there's three questions that you can have students answer in a portfolio. What, so, so what, now what? And so I just want to take you through um, an example of actually using that with a competency. So how could you use an exhibit in a portfolio to assess one of the ACGME competencies? And we'll just stop a minute and think about that. Um, what is an example of an exhibit that could be put into a portfolio to assess one of these competencies? Well, just to give you an example, um, a medical knowledge exhibit this could be where you have students add in training exam scores. And within the portfolio then, they could put their scores in, but then you could ask them the what, so what, now what. So the what would be explain which section of the exam that you need to focus more on. So maybe they were um, not so good in PEDS or not so good in OB, so that's a section they need to really focus on. The so what, um, they're not accustomed, accustomed to scoring poorly, so they're worried about doing well. So those are the, some things that they would talk about in the so what. The now what, this is what they think that they could do to improve. So then they put in, well, I could read the family practice obstetrics book. I could talk to P the PEDS rotation coordinator. So these are all things that could be put into a portfolio that really give us a better picture of um, how that student feels about how they did on their in-training exam scores. Um, in the future presentation, we're going to talk a lot about assessment of portfolios. We're going to talk about rubrics, checklists, self-assessment, and peer assessments, because I think they're all important. They all have their uses when you're talking about portfolios. But one of the um, big uses, I think, is formative and summative assessment. Um, there's a, a, several schools that have mapped out when they're going to provide assessments on portfolios or when students need to do assessment on their portfolio. And I think that's a good method to use because then students know that they are going to have a uh, time in October where they're going to have to do something or they're going to have a final exam and that's tied to a grade and they need to make sure that their portfolio is up to date because if you don't have those benchmarks or that time frame, then they're not going to have those, um, especially the procrastinators are not going to have those timelines to follow. So um, I think that there's a lot of articles that are really good on this and we'll pr provide those in the future session. 
And this is just the way a case uh, Western looks at formative and summative assessment, and we're going to talk about this um, pyramid more in the next presentation. But I think it's good as far as a reference on how to build up to the summative and actually have a final competency report from a portfolio based on a student or resident. Um, some of the conditions that make a reflective portfolio successful, um, it requires good coaching. Uh, like I said, reflection doesn't come naturally to students, so they have to be trained on how to improve on their reflection techniques. Student motivation is another one. Um, it actually motivates them to think and to improve. Structure and guidelines, um, they need to have more structure in the beginning, but then as you move them down that um, path, they can have more, it can be more open to the students. Um, adequate experiences and materials for re reflection, and then definitely a graded summative assessment. Um, I actually advocate for the formative and summative, but at a minimum, you know, a final graded summative assessment. And in the upcoming session, just some things to think about to prepare for that. We're going to talk about cases that we can use in portfolios, and these are varied. Um, we can talk about senior mentor, we can talk about quality improvement, healthcare financing. These are all things that can be reflected on in a portfolio, so we'll talk about those more in the future. And this is just a final article that I think is really good as a precursor to the upcoming session, and I'm going to provide that for you so that you can read it before you come to the session. And it gives you a really good background on kind of the, sec the success and um, failures of e-portfolios. So it gives us a lot to talk about. And I'm really glad that I got to talk to you today. I hope that th this was a good session as far as giving you background for the upcoming session. And I look forward to talking to you again in the future.